say Fort Knox is one of the most secure places in the United States, possibly even in the entire world. Fort Knox is a modern day fortress. Ashley Nation says that Fort Knox, Kentucky, is a 109,000 acre military base and it encompasses, that is, it surrounds the U.S. Federal Gold Reserve. It is known, in fact, I think the building that you see behind me is actually what is on the base and it's known as the United States Bullion Depository. Bullion just simply means the gold bars, which is what you see on the bottom of the picture. It is an impenetrable vault. They have security features that they will obviously not tell anybody online. Try to break in sometime, it will not end well for you. In fact, access is supremely monitored and restricted. Not just any and everybody gets to go uh, into Fort Knox. In fact, to my knowledge, and I could be wrong because it's been 80 years, not like I've been around that long, but anyway, uh, to my knowledge, the last president of the United States that was given access to be able to walk inside or rather roll inside uh, Fort Knox it was President Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1943. Now, that place is not just for the gold. They have some other storage areas that, for example, in World War II, that was where they kept the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence. Why? Well, for safekeeping, just in case the Germans and the Japanese had been able to bomb the United States, then those documents would have been protected. Fort Knox, says Ashley, is made up of actually the building part, but also some other areas, but essentially the building that we're looking at is made up of 16,000 cubic feet of granite, 4,200 cubic yards of concrete, 750 tons of reinforced steel, another 670 tons of structural steel. I guess it's safe to say, and every pun intended on that, that Fort Knox is safe and secure, modern day fortress. We know King David, who is the author of Psalm 18, in fact, the majority of the Psalms in the Old Testament are David. Now, there's some other authors as well. The Holy Spirit, who is God, is the one who led these people to write it down, and specifically uh, David. He understood just how scary and uncertain life could be. David was a soldier, so he had faced combat and warfare, and he understood a thing or two about combat, and therefore, um, as a... As a soldier, he understood the need to have a fortress. He understood the need to, to have a safe place. In fact, his father-in-law, King Saul, who was jealous of him, insecure about him, tried to kill him every time he turned around, chased him all over the land of Israel. So David understood that God is his fortress. He's your fortress tonight if you know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And David uh, personalized his praise of Jehovah God with love because God had rescued him and God had relieved him of so many dangers over the course of time. So how did David personalize it? Well, David in Psalm 18 uses metaphors. Now that maybe, for those of you who have English, you know what a metaphor is. I'm just going to back it up and put it this way. A metaphor is a descriptive word. And so he used a series of descriptive words to describe, or rather to personalize, his praise to God. Last time we were here, we talked about, well, the first time we were here from Psalm 18, uh, we talked about how uh, David loved Jehovah God as his personal strength. Last Wednesday night, we talked about how David loved Jehovah God as his personal rock, that stability. Tonight we're going to be looking at one other. I'm going to be reading from Psalm 18. Now my translation, maybe yours, has an introductory paragraph and then it goes right into verse 1. It tells you a little bit about what's going on. That is called context. It's always important to know what the context, that is the background story. So it says, to the chief musician, a song of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And David said, 
I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. May God bless the reading of his word. So David loved Jehovah God as his personal fortress. So it begs the question, does it not? What is a fortress? Well, a fortress in the language of the Old Testament is what is known as a defense. It is a stronghold. It is a safe place. In fact, one Bible teacher by the name of Ellicott says is picture a high cliff or maybe a high mountain with a, a castle on the very highest part almost inaccessible. You have the idea. Now the image you see behind me is an artist picture of what is believed to be King Herod's palace on a, it's not really a mountain, but it is a high cliff area. It's actually a mesa. That is known as Masada. The next picture is of what it probably looks out, looks like today uh, in 2023. You can kind of tell of the structures. It is about 820 feet above sea level. What sea are we talking about? The Dead Sea. It was there where the, one of the first Jewish forts was created. In the year 142 BC, if I'm not mistaken, later on in the New Testament, uh, King Herod the Great, that's the one that was in charge when Jesus was born, he built his palace there because, well, he wanted a monument to himself so he could say, hey, how great I am. But he also wanted a safe place in case somebody got after him. And then, of course, later in the uh, early uh, first century AD, you had a war between Israel and the Jewish people and the Roman Empire. Unfortunately, it did not end well for the Jewish people. And therefore, the uh, Masada became a refuge or a fortress of last resort. Every single Jewish person who was defending that fort and took refuge in that fort, unfortunately, they died rather than submit to the Roman Empire. So when we think about that a personal fortress. It's a reminder that a fortress can be viewed as a first resort, a faithful resort, some place that you can go to that you can depend on, and in the case of Masada, a last resort. However, the next question is very similar. We've explained what a fortress is, so how is God a fortress? How is God a fortress in David's life? How might God specifically, how might Jesus be a fortress for you, young people or children or adults? How might God be that fortress for you? Well, number one, he is what I call a strategic stronghold. Remember that word fortress means a stronghold. Jesus is the first resort. He is the finest resort. And he is the only resort that you need to go to. And when I say resort, I'm not saying sitting in a lounge chair by a pool, uh, uh, sipping you a cup of coffee like I might be known to do, taking in the rays. Although that would actually be pretty cool. I wouldn't mind doing that. That's not the type of resort we're talking about. We're talking about that, that refuge to go to. You see, Jesus cannot be moved. He will not be defeated. And he will never be destroyed. So it makes sense for you to put your hope and trust in him your very life, as well as your soul, for safekeeping. The Bible says in Psalm 9, verse 9, The Lord also will be a stronghold or refuge for the oppressed. A refuge or stronghold in the times of trouble. And Nehum, or Nehum, depends on how you want to pronounce it. I can do both. Chapter 1, verse 7, The Lord has got a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in Him. Growing up, I lived in Camp, Mississippi. I was pretty much raised by my grandparents, and my home was located, it was a two-story house, located at 210 East North Street, Camp, Mississippi. And for the people living there right now, forgive me for blaring it out across cyberspace. It'll always be my home. Anyway, um, when I was a child, later when I was a teenager, and even as a young adult, but specifically when I was a child, that was my safe place. That was my strategic uh, retreat. Why? Well, you know, at times when I might uh, get my feelings hurt, times when I might be feeling bad, sometimes when I was feeling sad, times when I actually physically injured myself and got hurt, that was the place to go to. I knew there was always going to be somebody there who cared, somebody who was going to take care of me and help me out. Later on, 
Um, as I grew, grew older, uh, when my grandparents were retired, I knew that their presence was always pretty much going to be there, and they were comfortable because nobody but nobody was going to get me at that house. At least that's how I thought. They gave me comfort. They gave me advice. They gave me encouragement, and many times got in my face and said, "You need to settle down and chill out." Then, point taken. It was my safe place. But number two, Jesus is a secure stronghold. All that you entrust to Him, including yourself, is eternally secure. So no matter, no matter what comes at you or who comes after you, meaning, in other words, they're trying to get you, He's your Fort Knox, only better. The Bible says in Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. I have had some dental procedures that will make your hair curl. Okay, I've had root canals galore. I've had two oral surgeries where they slice and dice. I've had drills and fills. Um, so you might say that I memorized a big chunk of this uh, passage of Scripture so that when I would be in the chair, I would recite that in my head. I would think about each word and how it might apply to me. So that, uh, I'm sorry, when they dead you, you'd still feel some things. Uh, at least I did. And so there were, I didn't like the way they deadened me, so sometimes I would just grip the chair and grip and bear it. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, um, but anyway, I would grip the chair because I'm like, don't put any more of that in me because that just makes me feel too weird. And I, I would rather have the pain than the uh, than the uh, numbness. And so I would focus on that verse. It helped to calm me down because 90 percent of my issue was a little bit of anxiety, <laughs> okay, a whole lot of anxiety, and then some of it was just a physical discomfort. It also helped me pass the time. So in a very <coughs> personal and practical way. Jesus was my secure stronghold. The Bible again reminds us, for you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. And then there's a little word that says Selah or Selah. It means a dramatic pause. So we take a pause just for a minute and think about how would this apply what type of issues are you facing tonight where you need a fortress to go to? And not as a last resort, but as your first and most faithful and finest resort. Jesus is your first resort, and He is your finest and faithful resort. You don't need anything or anyone else. His presence is a fortress, and you have access to His presence because of a personal relationship with Him. That is, if you know Christ as Lord and Savior, is he that strategic stronghold for you tonight? And that is for children, that is for young adults, it is for teenagers, it is for adults of all ages. Is he your strategic stronghold tonight? Next point is this. All you trust to him, he will safeguard. So is he your safe place tonight? See, your relationship represents with Jesus Christ. Your relationship with Christ represents the armor of God and the fortress of God. That is an incredible defensive position. But it does you and I no good if we neglect it. Okay? So spend time with Jesus in the Bible. Do what it says. It's not that terribly hard. There are some passages a little harder to understand than others, but the teachings of Jesus are not hard to put into practice. Spend time with Jesus in prayer. Five minutes, guys, just five minutes. Can you not pray with Jesus five minutes? I would say, ask him to do more, but at least five minutes. And you do that consistent, consistently, practicing the presence of God, you will find that stronghold so that when life comes at you, you've got some place to go and some place to, to be and, and be able to be protected. Be uh, in church. Be with other Christians. That's why you need to be at Chunky Baptist Church on a regular basis, as in every time the door is open. Not so that we have a good number, I could care less, but rather about being as the people of God, practicing the presence of God. That's amazing. So that we have that safe place and we experience that, knowing that 
the church building is not the safe place of the stronghold. This is where we come and worship. But rather, Jesus is our safe place. If you, if you put your trust or, or dependence on anything or anyone else, it will disappoint you. Eventually, I will disappoint you. Okay? Uh, if, even this church will disappoint you at some point in time. But I promise you this. Jesus Christ will never disappoint you. He is that stronghold. So tonight, it comes to Again, the most important point. As our worship leaders come, I invite you to think and then to come as the Lord leads you. Maybe somebody needs to put their faith in Jesus Christ for the very first time. Let Him be that stronghold uh, for the very first time ever. You come down here tonight and we will talk about it and pray about it and we will nail it down. And maybe you are dealing with some issues in life and you're saved, but you maybe haven't been using the stronghold or the fortress like you could. Maybe you just need to come and pray about that and say, Lord, help me to abide in your fortress the way David did. So no matter what comes at me or what comes against me, you're my safe place. Is he your safe place? Not to stand as we sing our hymn of invitation and you come as God leads you to come tonight.